Hi! Welcome to the 3D Pendant. Recently, I posted a video on how to make chains out of 3D printing filament without a 3D pen or printer. If you missed it, the link is in the description. In it, I made chains of all different kinds and I also mentioned that from here it's just a tiny step to making chain mail. So let's look at how to go about that. First, we'll need to make jump rings. A whole lot of them. Let's take a quick look at how to get to this point. When you cut a piece of filament, it will retain the curve of the spool. We just need to tell it to remember a way smaller curve. And guess what? You don't even need a 3D pen or printer to do that. What you will need, however, is a water boiling kettle, rubber gloves, obviously the filament, and a rod of the diameter you want your jump rings to be. There are commercial jump ring making devices on the market. Some even fit the size of our filament. However, all you really need is something straight with a hole in it. The thin plumbing pipes or wooden dowels will do just fine. Also, knitting needles are good and come in all convenient sizes. If you have something like a knitting needle that you can't really drill a hole in, just tape the filament to the end of it. Also, if you have one of those kettles that switches off when the water starts to boil, you may need to switch to the old-fashioned kind and do it on the stove because you need to maintain a roaring boil for the duration of this process. Whenever you are forming the plastic into a new shape, it is always about how much to heat it and where. For this job, I will use a stream of steam, which will be just hot enough to soften the filament but not overmelt it. And doing it this way, I can easily control just what part I'm softening at the moment. By the way, the video on steaming and several other heating methods is in the description. Let's see a piece of this process in real time, so you get the idea of how slow you have to go. When making a coil, I want to heat the filament just a little piece at a time to be able to control how it's winding onto the dowel. And I need the heat to be just hot enough to soften it, to curb it, but not get it so soft that it will stick together. Steam is the perfect temperature for that. And please note, that this was only tested for PLA. It may not work for ABS. You would have to try it. Try to coil the plastic as evenly as possible. One strand right to the next. Do not overlap it, if you can help it. So you end up with the same size jump rings. Go slow enough for the heat to bend the filament without you having to pull at it because some PLA filament stretches. For this particular job you are better off with PLA Pro which doesn't stretch at all and produces very even rings. Here is what I mean by that. This coil has very even rings and also stretches evenly almost like a metal spring. This one may look similar at the first glance, 
but if you stretch it you can see it has some kinks in it where the filament stretched too much that doesn't mean you can't use it but you may need to cut out those stretched parts and not use those particular rings next tool we'll need are flush cutting pliers that produce good straight cuts it can be a bit of work to get the coils of the dowel you can keep your rubber gloves on for a tight grip and keep twisting until the coil loosens from the forming rod the longer the coil the harder this gets so you are better off making several two to three inch size coils rather than one long one now we're ready to cut it right where it makes a full circle and we have a jump ring if you skip one circle and cut it in the next one you will get what is called a split ring which is basically a keychain ring which has the advantage that it will hold things on it without having to be sealed shut which brings us to how to seal jump rings should you want them to be super safe twist it till the two ends really meet and use a wood burning iron with a skinny tip or a styrofoam cutter to seal it stick it together as fast as you can and hold it till it cools this is what i mean by styrofoam cutter it happens to have this thin slightly curved tip on it which is perfect for this job so now that we have all these jump rings made let's make a chain or even better let's make chain mail if this is your first time making chain mail do yourself a favor and don't make your rings too tiny i am using half an inch size dowel here you can go smaller once you get used to this process do not try to remove the coil while it's still warm it can distort or try to unwind all kinds of strange things either let it cool for a while or if you are in a hurry quench it in cold water to speed up the cooling process for the purposes of explaining things i will use two colors so you can follow what i'm trying to do here it's a bit easier to keep track of the pattern if you have two kinds of rings either in two different colors or of two different types in this case both i will use black jump rings and gold split rings traditionally you make chain mail just from jump rings but to make my life easier i like to use a combination of jump rings and split rings because that way i can get away with stealing just half of them I will show you what I mean in a minute. I will be making the traditional European 4-in-1 pattern. But there are other patterns if you get ambitious. As the name suggests, we will use one black jump ring and put in four gold split rings. If you make this with real wire, you don't have to seal anything you just butt up the ring so it's as closed as possible and hope the wire is hard enough not to pull open the plastic is softer so it's safer to seal the jump rings shut the split rings you don't have to seal shut that's why i like to use them for at least some of the projects plus it makes a bit more interesting looking patterns and then you repeat and repeat and repeat now for the time consuming part i am not gonna lie to you 
this takes a while. But look at the bright side, you will be really good at it by the time you are done. The most important part of this is arranging all the four in one units the same way to make a pattern. The four inner rings should all radiate out like flower petals and the two front rings facing you should lay on top of the back ones. Another important thing to notice is that the black inner ring is tilted with the high part to the front facing you. Then take another unit, arrange it the same way, and scooch it on top of the first one. Here is the side view so you can see how they lay on top of each other, like shingles. The high points of the gold rings pointing away from me and the high points of the black ones towards me. I will mark the spots where the two units of gold rings overlap with pins. I usually work on a foam core board or cork board so I can put pins in it to keep the pattern organized. And now I'll take an open black ring and follow one pin in all the way to the bottom surface and then follow the other pin back out from the surface up to the top. pattern. Every black ring should still have four gold ones in it. And the black rings should never go through each other anywhere. And they should all still point upwards towards you. Here is the side view again so you can see the angles. Now it's time to butt up the new ring and seal it. Seal, hold till it cools, and you have just joined two four in one units. Now let's do it again. Arrange the flower petals so they point to the side, and oops, the black ring is slanted the wrong way. So we'll need to turn it around so it points with the high side towards you and stack it onto the previous chain. Switch the pins into the two eye-shaped windows where it needs to get joined next. And again, follow the first pin all the way down and the second pin all the way out. It may be a bit cumbersome with the pins, but it's a good way to learn. Once you have the correct pattern in your eye, you can do it without the pins, but it is crucial to the pattern that the rings lay a certain way and you go through them in consistent direction, or it will drive you nuts and make you quit. Seal the third unit on. And now we have three units attached and you can keep going and make this strip as long as you like. But now let's look at how to expand sideways. Let's start on the top and arrange the first four gold rings next to each other. Pin the two eye-shaped windows and repeat. In along one pin and out along the other one. And seal and hold. And repeat. 
promised you you will get good at this. In fact, so good at it that you may not need to bother with pins anymore because you will see the pattern and know exactly where and how to join it. I know these in the back go into the black ring first and the next unit goes on top of them. No pins necessary. But I still keep it pinned on the board on top of my piece because it helps me to stretch the pattern quickly and check if it looks right before I seal each new ring shut. And going sideways, I will stack one side on in the right order and then the next one the back gold ring on the bottom and the second on top of it and seal hold and repeat and repeat by the way always open and close the jump rings sideways like you would if you were working in real metal gets a bit more confusing without the color coding but I bet by now you are starting to see the pattern too as you work with smaller rings you may need two pair of jewelry pliers to do this with and small rings come out a bit firmer so perhaps you can get away with just butting them and not heat sealing them There's a limit to how small you can make these rings with the standard 1.75 millimeter filament and still fit four rings in one and have some room left to work. These were made on number 10 US size knitting needle and you can't get much smaller than that. Well, yes you can, but I promised we won't need our 3D pens for this project, so we won't go there today. When I started this project, I was thinking, this would be really useful for all the cosplayers and LARPers out there that make replicas of chainmail armor as a much more lightweight option. But as I progressed, I realized there is more to the potential use of this than just a history lesson. The selection of filaments makes color-specific projects possible. Combinations of colors, sizes and types of rings makes the projects from this very ornamental looking. It also moves extremely well. And as I mentioned, the weight is not an issue. So it is extremely usable for anyone in fashion design, whether it is for stage, movies or runway. So, should we make a garment now? Well, maybe in one of the future videos. Until then, go and make something.